farming or seaweed farming. Now, marine algae, mostly macro algae, farming is done in the coastal area surrounding the, um, uh, the continents. It is mostly done in the south and the southeast Asian countries in the tropical region and nowadays due to the increased um, trend of use of uh, and macro algae as seafood as well as other products from algae this type of cultivation is gaining popularity even in the cold countries like the scandinavian countries where a project grass it was uh, uh, experimental uh, cultivation of the marine algae was done by under this project grass by the Scandinavian countries as well as the countries uh, that are uh, in that region, especially Germany, Sweden and all. So uh, the, considering these facts, marine algae cultivation has gained much popularity due to the tremendous um, uh, huge uh, number of items that we can get from this macro algae. Hello friends, I am Ayantika and in this video I will be discussing about marine algae farming or the farming of macro al algae. Earlier I have made videos about uh, the cultivation technique used for the microalgae in the photobioreactor and the rays of a pond and I have put the links in the description. So this video will be about macroalgae especially in the marine region that is grown cultivated in the marine region. of cultivation of the macroalgae. The macroalgae, they are very good source of nutrient as compared to fishes. They have a high protein content as well as it is a source of other minerals and vitamins. So being a very nutritious, uh, nutrient rich food product, it is also, it has got nutri uh, nutraceutical as well as pharmaceutical property and they also have uh, the hydrocolloid especially in the macroalgae they are the base product they are the raw pro uh, material for a wide variety of industry so these uh, uh, macroalgae they are very economically important um, product to be cultivated and at the same time as it is very nutrient rich so it will provide um, less stress um, because uh, on the fishery because uh, already there has been a, a global trend of decrease in the fish, uh, fishing uh, in the yield of fishes due to overfishing and this has caused economic stress on the fishermen and uh, in order to supplement with their economic uh, stress they are taking uh, this uh, cultivation of macro algae uh, in the coastal region in the intertidal subtidal region in the uh, coral uh, reef beds so uh, this is uh, this is releasing uh, the stress uh, that is tremendous stress that is uh, on the other type of uh, fish uh, marine products like fishes oyster because at the, uh, they have the same flavor the macro algae they have the same flavor as any other sea uh, products and also they are uh, nutritionally dense but at the same time these uh, uh, macro algae they do not require any uh, input like for example the fertilizer and uh, the pesticides because uh, in, in this uh, macro algae they grow naturally in the intertidal region they are uh, the nutrient they obtain the nutrient from natural upwelling of nutrient that is brought about by the wave action or the rotation of the earth so this uh, wave action and rotation of the earth the natural upwelling there is no need of excess extra fertilizer to be added in this type of cultivation and it do not require any pesticide whatever uh, the grazers um, that feed on this uh, 
macro algae has to be removed manually so they do not require any pesticide so no chemical input is required so this is very environmental friendly cultivation at the same time it is growing on the sub intertidal region the estuarine region so there is no it is not putting any extra pressure on the land use we know that uh, due to excess population there has been tremendous pressure on the land for growing more and more uh, food product but this type of food product that is the macro algae it is growing on the uh, coastal region in shallow water so no extra pressure on the land use pattern and at the same time this most important point it is that it preserves the coral reef we know that the corals they require a very pristine water uh, for its uh, growth it cannot grow in turbid water it cannot uh, tolerate eutrophication but there has been anthropogenic uh, due to anthropogenic influence there has been uh, increased eutrophication and turbidity so this uh, uh this uh, macro algae they prevent the turbid water or the eutrophied water from reaching the uh the corals they uh, they settle down the colloidal matter in the turbid water and fix the soil and at the same time uh, it uses the excess nutrient in the eutrophied water to gain its own biomass so in this way it reduces eutrophication reduces turbidity and thus preserves the coral reef this uh, macro algae also is a very good uh, it is a very good niche for fishes the fries of fishes and the uh, and um, variety of other invertebrate uh, marine invertebrates also and so thus it is uh, it is providing ecological niche for a wide variety of marine fauna and as because it is an algae it fixes nit uh, carbon dioxide by photosynthesis so this uh, this is sequestering of carbon reduce uh, in the ocean reduces the ocean acidification so whatever carbon dissolved in the water it is reduced and uh, a reduction of carbon in the water also reduces the acidification in the ocean and as it is using uh, the carbon dioxide for photosynthesis it is also producing oxygen that is it is um, reducing the carbon content of the water and increasing the oxygen content of water thus reducing the hypoxic condition that had developed in the ocean so this uh, this this the uh, three are the very important uh, positive effects of or ecological importance of the macro algae cultivation and the uh, this uh, preservation of coral reef ecological niche for a wide variety of micro uh, flora as well as the macro flora and fauna so and also carbon sequestration these three points this uh, these points they are uh, the mm, the macro algae they are have the uh, having the similar effect as that of the mangroves the mangroves also they preserve the coral reef by bringing down the turbidity reducing the eutrophication and also the mangroves they are also just like the uh, the macro algae they are the niches for a wide variety of macro uh, as well as micro fauna in the estuarine as well as the intertidal region and also they fix a uh, carbon so in this way the mangroves and the macro algae they are the one of the keystone species in this uh, entire eco uh, marine uh, coastal ecosystem so this are the ecological importance of macro algae also one thing is that uh, as because it is reducing the eutrophication so the harmful algal bloom that is caused due to the eutrophication the chance of this algal bloom is also reduced but there are also some negative points uh, especially 
because we are growing this we are growing a, a specific species of uh, algae we are removing the other flora and also we are removing the fauna that grazes on this type of algae so there is a site specific loss in the diversity of flora and fauna in the area of cultivation because we are removing all the economically unimportant uh, species of flora from the region because they might cause overshading of the uh, flora of uh, um, overshading of the algae of our uh, importance so in order to reduce the competition for the light they are removing other type of um, algae from the area and in order to reduce the economic loss caused by the grazers uh, that is the uh, that is the organisms that feed on the algae the macro algae for example the sea urchins as because these are uh, man, uh, removed so they cause a site specific uh, endangerment of the flora and fauna so this is one of uh, important bio risk another is that uh, that uh, there if uh, the species that we are using are very specific and if uh, the that species of the genus gets mixed um, with the other species of the same genus which are not that much ecologically important economically important by this i mean that you have a species a which which has got certain very important quality that we need but on the other hand another uh, species of the same genus that that is uh, for example the wild type which does not have the economically important quality and they are um, they are uh, somehow they are producing a hybrid then uh, the there will be a loss of property a good property of the uh, in the hybrid so the genetic mixing with the other uh, species is a uh, risk it is not a biosecurity risk but it is a risk it is it will cause uh, ecological economical loss to the farmer so this is one of the point another thing is that the rapid spread of disease we know that uh, in when it is cultivated it is cultivated uh, any uh, in any cultivation uh, there is crowding of crops the crops are uh, placed at a specific interval and uh, though they are uh, placed at specific interval still in a cultivated uh, area there is a rapid spread of disease than compared to wild and uh, not only there is rapid spread of disease but also other type of parasites also so uh, this type uh, this can cause economic loss to the cultivator and uh, this uh, this uh, species as they are harboring the parasite and the pests so this uh, parasite and pest can uh, spread to other uh, area where it is uh, in the in the surrounding area and cause disease as well as death of the other species of algae that is not cultivated but is growing in wild so these are the species of algae that is uh, generally cultivated uh, and these are all economically important uh, species here in this picture we are seeing the monoline culture they here every, uh, the each of this line they are harvested at regular interval using uh, the boats uh, harvester boats they are harvested and this is uh, done actually in the ocean in the um, coastal region and this is a off site offshore um, cultivation where cultivation is done in tags so uh, i'm not going through the names of this species that is uh, cultivated but uh, you can pause the slide and go through this so what are the benefits for cultivating uh, the macro algae one is that uh, it is uh, it is a very good source of bio fuel we know that bioethanol biomethanol these all um, they, they, we get it from the algae algae it is cultivated and um, 
if it is uh, manipulated uh, like uh, growing in a nutrient deficient condition uh, or it is getting genetically modified then that there will be an increase in the fatty acid content in their body nutrient uh, deprivation as well as uh, genetic engineering can cause an increase in the uh, the fatty acid content in their body that is the oil content in their body apart from uh, being used as a biofuel they are also they have this pharmaceutical property uh, they have a lot of um, they act as uh, they act as a gradient of uh, in a lot of drugs and also they have got cosmetic properties and they have got nutraceutical property now nutraceuticals they are uh, they have got therapeutic property but they are not considered pharmaceuticals because they uh, they help in improving our health but they cannot help in reducing or um, stopping any disease and this nutraceuticals they are not regulated by fda unlike the pharmaceuticals which are regulated by the fda and uh, the macroalgae they are traditionally they are eaten as a source of food very delicious and nowadays uh, due to this high nutritional value they uh, the use of macroalgae as a dietary um, a staple is getting uh, and this other countries are also using it as a dietary staple apart from the southeast asian countries uh, this uh, uh, macroalgae is getting um, in the culinary uh, dishes of all uh, European as well as the American uh, uh, countries also. So, one thing I should be saying, the Native American, uh, both the North and the South uh, American uh, continent, the Native people, they, they used to have this uh, algae, macroalgae in their diet and um, and nowadays, um, again, it has been globally, uh, this uh, uh, macroalgae has been globally used for their nutritional as well as a th therapeutic use. They are, uh, they are eaten. And uh, the major cultivator earlier, traditionally it was cultivated in Japan and Korea uh, using a very traditional uh, cultivation technique of using bamboo baskets. But now commercially it is cultivated in China, which is the largest producer of the sea wheat. But uh, though China is the largest producer of sea wheat, but um, the, all the processing, downstream processing is done by Japan. So Japan is the largest processor of this type of macroalgae. China is the largest producer. Earlier Japan was the producer. Now China has replaced it. And um, most of the seaweed algae that uh, the China cultivates, it is sent to Japan for further processing. And uh, these are the countries, are the Southeast Asian countries, as well as countries of the Pacific uh, nations, uh, where uh, this type of cultivation is done on a commercial scale. Apart from that, uh, yeah, the Scandinavian country they have started a project grass where the they have been uh, uh, doing a pilot project experimental. Um, basis they are cultivating the various algae under a very controlled condition but i will not be talking about this here in this video that will be a case study of the project grass in our next video but that is also very important because in any question you write if you include a case study in your answer then you will be definitely getting much better marks than uh, anyone who is not writing any case study in their uh, answers so do watch that video also so what are the conditions that are required for uh, the site selection first thing will be that uh, if we are growing any spe particular species we should be very uh, we should be very uh, uh, specific on the salinity 
say for example we are growing a species a which requires a high salinity but the area that we are uh, considering for um, our cultivation does not have that much of salinity so that uh, so in that case we should uh, change the species because a species which is requiring high salinity will not grow properly in a low saline condition so there will be not uh, much increase in the biomass so while determining the species and uh, determining the site we should also a very important factor is that the optimum salinity if uh, both matches then only we can cultivate we should cultivate a species um, depending upon the salinity condition of the area we are growing because when we are growing out in the wild uh, we cannot control the salinity so better uh, choose the species that matches with the salinity of the uh, uh, water we are uh, we are thinking of growing the macroalgae another is that optimum sunlight so uh, shallow water is generally preferred because the sunlight is very optimal there very deep uh, in very deep water floating uh, uh, rafts can be done but uh, but uh, species that are um, found to be growing in a submerged condition um, that is in the in the that is attached to the bottom they require this shallow water so of, uh, sunlight is one of the another important uh, condition to be considered then is the temperature of the sea water many uh, species most of the species of macroalgae they are found to be growing in the uh, uh, tem tropical to temperate region so uh, if you are in the um, uh, in the um, in the higher uh, latitude uh, then uh, there can be a, a, a condition of choice of uh, species a species that is growing well in the tropical region cannot be surviving in the higher latitude in the temperate region so uh, while uh, um, growing the temperature of the um, species uh, of the sea water is also important factor we should choose our uh, macroalgae species according to uh, the temperature of the sea water because any species that is growing preferring a high temperature will not grow in the low temperature in low temperature area it will be growing only during the summer season so that is one factor another factor is that the wave action if the wave action is too gentle then what will happen the there will be natural upwelling of minerals but at the same time if the wave action is very rough there is a high wave action then it will cause tearing of the biomass of the algae so that will cause economic loss so we will choose an area that has an intermediate amount of wave action another problem is the risk of fouling the risk of fouling is the um, decomp deposition of uh, other type of algae microalgae or other planktonic organism or even micro and as well as the macro invertebrates that is found to be growing on the macroalgae this fouling can if it is the, with the um, with a microalgae then it will reduce the photosynthetic area it will uh, uh, not reduce the photosynthetic area but it will reduce the amount of light available to the macroalgae but if the biofouling is due to any aquatic uh, invertebrates aquatic uh, organ animal then uh, that um, animal will be probably grazing Uh, on the um, uh, algae and it will again cause economic loss so uh, there uh, we should be uh, this uh, in order to check the biofouling uh, this regular uh, uh, regular uh, regular uh, supervision of the of the cultivated area is done to check if there is any biofoulant or not this makes uh, the cultivation of algae very high labor intensive because you have to check it every day or uh, every few days whether there is biofouling or not and remove the foulants 
usually biofouling is more if uh, the it is dependent upon the ocean bottom if the ocean bottom has very soft mud then there will be turbidity uh, uh, when there is wave action there will be turbidity but if the bottom of the ocean it has hard uh, bottom that is rocky bottom then what will happen there will be a lesser amount of turbidity and the risk of biofouling will be also reduced so uh, the this these two factors are related uh, fouling and the type of uh, sea bottom and then we come to the optimal water depth the optimal water depth uh, because we know that in very deep uh, ocean the amount of uh, nutrient uh, is less and uh, so um, the, uh, that is why uh, most of the cultivation is done in shallow water which is nutrient rich one thing that should be considered uh, that uh, the, there are certain species that are vegetatively propagated and uh, that is uh, they can be uh, just uh, torn uh, away and put in the um, ropes of the in the final rope but there can be other species that has to be started with the spores that is there will be a nursery a hatchery uh, for this uh, spores and then this uh, small uh, algae that is uh, the germling algae will be later transported to the area of cultivation so there is two type vegetative propagation do not require any hatchery but those that uh, start as spores require a hatchery or nursery for cultivation so cultivation is done uh, two types one is the in the floating type where uh, it is done by long line or uh, raft cultivation another is the fixed in the open water cultivation in the ocean it is done by floating method uh, the floating method which is two types the long line type and that of the raft cultivation and the fixed type where uh, cages or fences are fixed at the bottom of the ocean so and in the floating line here we see that uh, nylon ropes they are floated and with the help of certain anchors here we see in this picture and algae they are tied with uh, strings and allowed to grow for a period of one to uh, four week and depending upon the species they are harvested because uh, the biomass accumulation rate of all species are not the same so depending upon the species their harvesting is done now uh, pond culture certain macro algae they are also found to be growing um, in the uh, uh, growing in the artificial condition also it was found experimentally and now they are uh, grown yeah, in the race of a pond this is an uh, example it is a picture of the race of a pond where um, it can be the algae can be cultivated offshore sites offshore site in the race of a uh, um, the ponds on the land or they can be in the coastal area but a bit uh, off site and generally chondrus crispus and gracilaria they these are the two species of marine algae that can easily grow in artificial condition in the offshore site condition also what they need is that they need carbonated uh, water and this carbonated water can be uh, from the flue gas of the industries uh, and in this uh, type of uh, process we use the flue gas which otherwise would have uh, increased the amount of carbon dioxide in the air and uh, increase the temperature of our earth but uh, this uh, use of uh, the flue gas in the algae production does help in uh, reducing the Uh, greenhouse gas and at the same time the biomass of the algae is also increased and uh, 
after biomass uh, has doubled it is harvested and uh, the whatever nutrient is lost is added again and this type of uh, re-addition of nutrient is called the pulse fertilization we in the on-site um, cultivation that is the fixed and the bottom culture uh, this type of fertilization was not required but as we are growing in an artificial um, way this or uh, in the offshore uh, site in the race away ponds and uh, other type of small tanks also so this uh, type of ops, uh, offshore site will be requiring this pulse fertilization because uh, nutrient is uh, used up so there are uh, many problems faced by this uh, macroalgae cultivation the first is that of the labor labor it is very labor intensive because uh, they, the, this type of uh, cultivation is not high technology. So they require high amount of labor, especially uh, to check on the algae every day for uh, biofoulants or grazers. Another problem faced is that uh, if there is eutrophication, anthropogenic eutrophication, then certain species of uh, blue-green algae, especially this Lingbaya majuscula, which is uh, blue-green algae and it produces a variety of toxin depending upon the strain. Say, for example, a particular strain of Lingbaya can produce um, a hepatotoxin another uh, strain will produce a neurotoxin so this uh, if uh, not checked uh, whether uh, other uh, species of algae are uh, growing in the cultivated area then there can be a contamination by this type of uh, cyanobacteria or blue green algae which can cause severe health issues Especially uh, the cyanobacteria, they produce uh, hepatotoxins that is affects the liver, the neurotoxins that affects the neurons, the, uh, the, the and a lot of other type of toxins. So this type of uh, contamination risk is there. And another problem is that of the biofoulants. Biofoulants they reduce the um, the photosynthetic uh, area they reduce the amount of light they grow on the algae and reduce the photosynthesis the primary uh, production capacity of the um, marine algae and uh, epiphytes also uh, many algae are found to be growing epiphytically on this uh, macro algae so they also reduce the amount of uh, sunlight that the macro algae will be getting and also um, this macro algae they can tolerate certain amount of eutrophication but certain species are very sensitive to eutrophication so you have to check on that also we have to check on the grazers also another problem is that the most important problem is the apart from uh, the cyanobacterial contamination this heavy metal um, pollution is another problem because uh, we know that algae whether uh, micro or macro all the um, algae they are very good accumulator of heavy metal so if there is heavy metal pollution in the water then that will definitely be accumulated in the macro algae and we know that heavy metal they are accumulative poison which means that if uh, they gradually accumulate in our body and when they cross a certain threshold they bring metabolic disturbances various metabolic disturbances in our body so uh, the problem apart from all other problem this problem with the bio uh, this uh, cyanobacteria that is the lingpaya and that of the heavy metal is most uh, damaging to our health so that was all about the cultivation of um, macro algae and I will be in the next video I will be making a case study on the uh, project class because uh, though um, question will come on the techniques that is used in the macro algae cultivation but if you include uh, any case study then definitely you will be getting better marks so now my next video will be on that and uh, 
I will be putting the link uh, of the earlier videos in my description box. And thanks for watching this video. Uh, do comment on the, how you like the video or uh, any topic that I, I, I uh, you want me to make videos on. If you like the video, do share it with your friends and do subscribe because your subscription will encourage me to make more such videos. Thanks once again for watching this video.